Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm continuing on with my response to Matt Powell's latest video called The Atheist Religion. I'm going to go ahead and put these into a nice little playlist for you, so if you missed it, go ahead and start with part one. Don't worry, I'll wait. Back now? Okay, last time he opened his video once again with an argument from consequences, trying to link shootings with an acceptance of evolution. He finished with one raw mat, a health guru who thinks it's healthy to live on nothing but honey, which is essentially pure sugar, so no, that's not healthy at all. And of course, that's just what he thinks when he's not busy being a breatharian. You know, those people who claim to live on nothing but breathing air? Yeah, let's hope it gets better from here. If I believed that God exists, and I believed that it was the Bible God that existed, I would not worship it. Which is a fair point. The God of the Bible is described as a genocidal maniac with severe narcissism who only threatens to torture you for all of eternity because he loves you and wants to scare you into doing what he wants you to do. Now, personally, I couldn't say for sure what I would actually do if that god were demonstrated to exist. I'd be terrified, sure, I might even be scared into going through the motions of worshipping, but I couldn't actually feel anything approaching love for such a being, and surely such a god wouldn't be fooled by mere lip service. Aaron Ra recently said, if it was the God of the Bible, someone asked him, if it was the God of the Bible, and it was proved to be the God of the Bible, would you serve him? He said, I would not serve it. Yes, that is what he said, Matt's dad. And you seem rather upset about God being referred to as an it rather than a he. Does that mean that you believe that God has a penis? Actually, with reference to this, I've usually heard apologists say something along the lines of, it's not about having a physical penis, it's that God has a masculine nature. Which seems to me like an accidental admission that gender and physical sex don't necessarily line up with each other, and that your gender identity and preferred pronouns don't have to match up with your physical body. Also, why are you sitting at the mini-president desk out by a cornfield? Did you see the president's press conference at his cute little desk and decide that you could one-up the ridiculousness? Also, also, I believe this is the first time in this movie that we've seen Tommy McMurtry, who may or may not be sexually attracted to pumpkins, and is definitely not affiliated with TommyMcMurtry.com. Talk about hatred for God! Wouldn't serve it. Well, I can't speak directly to Aaron's emotions, as I am not him, but it sounded to me more like a lack of respect for a fictional character, coupled with anger toward people who want to make important, life-changing decisions for other people's lives based on what this fictional character supposedly wants. They go out on the street, these atheists, and they hold up signs, and they say, like, free thought, good without God, and, and they hold up all these signs, do you know how ridiculous that would look if we did that? Yeah, Matt, I do know how ridiculous that would look. Because you, or people with beliefs that are very similar to yours, do that on a regular basis. Look at me, everybody, I believe in science. Like, who's gonna take you seriously if you do that? I'm not even sure what to say here. Like, yeah, you would look ridiculous holding up a sign that says you believe in science, because you've made it quite clear from your videos that you do not believe in science. But sadly, in the US, belief in science is not as prevalent as it should be. I mean, sure, you and your ilk like to say that you believe in science, but then you cherry pick which science to accept based entirely on what your unscientific holy book has to say on certain matters. So no, you don't believe in science. They're an organization, they're a group of people, they all tend to think the same way. Yup, we all sure do think the same things all the time. That's why you never see schisms in the atheist community, no sir. Stuff like that never happens. I mean, sure, generally speaking, atheists do tend to be more left-leaning politically, but the reason for that isn't because there is some atheist authority telling us that this is what to think. It's because once you get away from an authority saying things like homosexuality is evil, for example, it turns out that there's really no rational reason to not accept homosexuality. Same goes for a lot of the other issues that tend to get divided up between right and left. The only reason to be on the right-wing side of a lot of these issues are religious in nature. Now that being said, of course right-wing atheists exist. I'm sure there are already at least a few comments on this video already complaining about my saying that atheists tend to lean left and that the reason for this is a lack of religious authority. 
They're busy typing right now that they lean right and don't need no stinking God to tell them what to think on political issues. But yeah, we all think the same. And matter of fact, atheist churches are opening up everywhere. The atheist church is launching 35 new services in cities across the world. Yeah, there are some atheist church services, which is basically an attempt to capture the feeling of community that comes with belonging to a more traditional church, but without the religious aspects of it. It's funny, in one of the articles I read on the atheist church services, there appears to be a lack of consensus as to what they even are when a reporter interviewed various members of the congregation. Some would gleefully call it a church, others would insist that it's not a church. This is exemplified in the statement, Jones insists that he is not trying to found a new religion, but some members of his congregation disagree. The congregation of this religion disagree with the founder about whether or not they even are a religion. Now tell me more about how we all think the same. Atheism, remember, is a very small demographic. They only consist of about 5-7% to 7 of the entire world's population. So, arguing based on popularity? Christianity is the number one religion in the world, therefore it's true? I'm not sure what you're trying to gain with this argument here. Like, there are an estimated 450 to 500 million people worldwide who, when asked about whether or not they think a god exists, would answer no. Which means that there are more people in the world who do not believe in a god than there are Americans in the world. If you include people who just say they are non-religious, there are over 700 million of those just in China. But if we just keep it at the 450 to 500 million number, then yeah, percentage-wise it's less than 10% of the world population. What's your point? That we can be ignored because you outnumber us? They're very, very small, but yet they lead the world in the worst statistics that you can possibly lead the world in. Yeah, we sure do lead the world in all the negative statistics. That's why the prison population is about 0.1% atheist, while the general population is 3.1% atheist, right? That's depression, medication intake, suicide, and school shootings. The link between religion and depression is far from confirmed. Studies come back with mixed results. A meta-analysis of 444 studies on the matter found that 60% of the studies reported less depression and faster remission from depression in more religious individuals. And the funny thing is, this beneficial feature of a religion is independent of which religion it is. The studies usually conclude that it's the feeling of belonging and having a supportive community that are the main factors there. You'd think that if there were one true religion, then that would be the one that saw all these benefits that you're suggesting that they have, while all the others would have similar depression rates as atheists. But no, you see strong community bonds playing the most important role, not God belief. Now, medication intake by itself is not indicative of anything. For example, if a bunch of people are prescribed antidepressants, who is going to be taking them more? The atheist who is accepting of the science behind the antidepressants? Or the person who goes to a church that insists that faith is all you need, God can heal your depression, throw those pills away? If it's five atheists and five members of a faith healing religion, then yeah, the five atheists will probably be taking more medication, even if the diagnosis rate were exactly the same between the atheists and the non-atheists. As to suicide, it's complicated. Some studies have found religion to be protective against suicide attempts, but a risk factor for ideation. Others still have found it to have no effect. One in particular, when looking at the link between suicide depression and religion, found that religion is a risk factor for people with depression. And as with the link between depression and religion, the link between suicide and religion comes down to belonging to a supportive community as being the important factor, not the religion itself. As to school shootings, we covered that in part one, but just a quick recap. In a surprise to nobody, it is quite a bit more complicated than just this person had this religion and shot up a school, therefore they go in this little box they'll say, well, believing in Jesus is like believing in Lord of the Rings. Well, why is it that nobody's writing against Lord of the Rings? Because there aren't significant numbers of people lobbying the government to make legislative changes that have a direct impact on our quality of life based on information found in Lord of the Rings? If there were, you can bet your ass that these same people would be out there protesting it the same way they protest you, Matt. Why is it that nobody's writing books against Santa Claus? Yeah. Well, they are, but they work for your team. Here's an article on AIG's website all about the dangers of celebrating Santa Claus over Jesus and idolizing him. So, stuff like that is silly because... Why is it that there are millions of people who make it their mission to write against somebody who they claim is nothing more than a fantasy? 
So by implication here, the people over at Answers in Genesis must really believe in Santa Claus as presented in today's Santa mythology. Otherwise, they wouldn't bother writing about him, right? What about you? You keep on putting out video after video about evolution, something you don't believe in, or at least claim not to believe in. Is this an admission that you know deep down in your heart of hearts that evolution is true? Because otherwise, why waste all your time and effort making videos and preaching sermons about it? What about atheism? You have a whole video right here over an hour long about why atheism isn't true. You've spent a lot of time on this. Why waste all that time and effort on something you don't even think is true? Clearly, deep down, you really know that it is true. Either that or this is just a stupid argument that doesn't work because there are valid reasons to argue against positions even if you don't personally believe in the position that you are arguing against. Maybe we can get to the bottom of why you feel like the way that you feel, and maybe that's probably the reason you don't believe in God. Not because of the evidence, it's because of the way that you feel. Okay, what do I even do here? You guys haven't given me anything to rebut. You guys haven't brought up any evidence for anything. You have asserted that you know what all atheists feel like, and you have asserted that all atheists, or at least most of them, think and feel the same as all the rest of them. You have provided zero evidence, except for some statistics that usually aren't even true, but when they are true, they're a lot more nuanced and complicated than you are presenting them. I'm not raging against you here, guys. I'm just waiting for you to give me something that I can actually do some research on. You have to have faith that there's a Big Bang, because you've never seen it. There's no evidence of it. See? That's the stuff I'm waiting for. The evidence for the Big Bang includes, but is not limited to, the expansion of space-time, the existence of the cosmic microwave background radiation, and the observation of phenomena whose existence was predicted based on models using the Big Bang as a starting point, like gravitational waves. Oh man, that felt good. But Sam Harris in 2006, he said this, If I could wave a magic wand and get rid of either rape or religion, I would not hesitate to get rid of religion. Well, I'm not entirely sure that I would agree with that statement, but I can see where he's coming from. Religion has been used rather frequently to subjugate women and treat them as second-class citizens. In the Old Testament, the women are basically property, and rape is treated as a property crime against the woman's father or husband. Still today, churches like the NIFB here refuse to allow women to hold positions of leadership or to preach. Treating women like property or second-class citizens creates a culture where rape really isn't all that big a deal. I wonder if Matt here even thinks marital rape is a possibility. So the argument could definitely be made that removing religion from the equation would be better for all of humanity and women in particular than just getting rid of rape. But yeah, you're looking for the gut reaction from people who share your religious views that religion is a good thing, so the obvious answer is to get rid of rape. Also worth pointing out is that this is in your video where you're trying to convince us that atheism is a religion, but here you are showing a quote from a prominent atheist saying that he wants to get rid of religion. Because evolution is true, and because everything can create itself out of nothing, and because there is no God that's needed for anything, therefore we're just on our own, we can, we've sprouted up these new people that call themselves atheists. No, atheism is not new. It's just that now we live in a time when being an atheist is a lot less likely to get you a death sentence than it once was. Atheists have been around for as long as God concepts have been around. And also all of your therefores there were severely flawed. And they've de decided to live their life and define themselves by this term. Not really. Sure, my YouTube channel is pretty much defined by my lack of a religious position and my opposition to religious indoctrination, but in my normal everyday life, I consider labels like father to be more important than atheist. I'd rather define my life by being a good dad than by not believing in God. Meaning they don't define themselves by what they believe in or what they like. Yes, they do. They just aren't necessarily as explicit about it as religious people. And even in addition to that, there are plenty of atheists that are secular humanists, which is a group that has some core beliefs and life stances. From their website, Secular humanism is comprehensive, touching every aspect of life, including issues of values, meaning, and identity. Thus, it is broader than atheism, which concerns only the non-existence of God or the supernatural. Important as that may be, there's a lot more to life, and secular humanism addresses it. They have a statement of principles akin to the core beliefs of other religions, including items like we believe that scientific discovery and technology can contribute to the betterment of human life, and we believe in the cultivation of moral excellence. You may disagree with some of the beliefs, but the fact of the matter is that atheists do have beliefs. 
And no, I am not saying that all atheists are secular humanists, but a lot are. And you just said that atheists don't believe in anything. Yet here's a group of mostly atheists who have a statement of principles that contains several belief statements. That's a whole big group of people, many of whom would agree that they are atheists, defining themselves by what they believe in, just like you said they don't. Learning this stuff is not hard. Maybe just put a tiny little bit of effort into it. They've decided to label themselves by what they don't believe in, supposedly. It's one label of many. Father, husband, musician, technology enthusiast, friend, son, lover of sweaters, the list goes on. I do not define myself by any one single label. I am a human being, and human beings are much more complex than any one label is capable of encompassing. So what they've done is they've labeled themselves by something like a non-stamp collector. Well, non-stamp collector has an excellent YouTube channel. I highly recommend it. It's not as active as it used to be, which is unfortunate. Anyway, in a video of his from 2008, he points out that atheism is a religion, like not collecting stamps is a hobby. Hence the name, non-stamp collector. And yes, that does indeed seem strange. Nobody would call themselves a non-stamp collector. Which is exactly the point. Most atheists don't live their lives with atheism being at the center. It's just that not believing in the same sky bully as you means that when you try to impose that sky bully's morals onto us without any reason aside from because the sky bully said so, we don't see why you should get away with that. So take for example that uh, I don't like stamps, I don't believe in them, and I don't want to collect them, so I've came up with a term that I can now define myself by not collecting stamps. It really doesn't make much sense. That depends. Are the people who do collect stamps pressuring their legislatures to pass laws that will affect the private aspects of my life that have nothing to do with their stamp collecting hobby? Maybe I prefer collecting coins to stamps. Are the stamp collectors trying to pass laws to make coin collecting illegal despite the fact that our collecting of coins doesn't impact the stamp collecting in the slightest? They even preach sermons about the evils of coin collecting, and then some of those preachers are caught collecting coins secretly themselves. These philandering philatelists are poking their noses where they don't belong, so naturally the coin collectors want to assert their right to collect coins in peace. You see how this works? It's not that hard. Except for unless it really bothered me and it hit me on a personal level. And that's kind of what the concept of God has done to these people. It's affected them in so much of a way that they've now labeled themselves anti-God. You're so close there. So close. It's not what God himself has done. It's what people claiming to represent God have done and are doing in God's name. If you would just philatel yourself quietly without trying to infringe on the coin collecting, nobody would have any problems. But you don't. And that's the end of part one, so I guess that's as good a place as any to break. Today's comment of the day comes to us from me. I'm doing it this time, because I keep forgetting to mention this, so I'm going to do this here. My charity fundraiser has been over for about two weeks now, and I haven't said anything about it yet. So, fundraiser is over, and we successfully raised $5,125 for Project Share. That is amazing. Everyone who helped out, thank you so, so much. I set the initial goal for $3,000, hoping to match what we raised for them last year, but I was thinking that because of COVID and everything, we'd be lucky to get half that. But no, you guys blew it away. We raised over $2,000 on the first day of the fundraiser, and now we've surpassed our goal by $2,125. I am so proud of all of you. You guys have restored my faith in humanity. Thank you so much. And special thanks as always to my patrons, Lynn Dobbs, Mark McManus, What Jesus, and all the rest, who are the philatelists who philatelate the stamps that are on my channel. If you'd like to sound dirty while just being a word that means stamp collector, you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar per week over at patreon.com slash vice rhino. If you feel so inclined, you can also support the channel through direct donation or my Amazon wish list, which are linked in the description. If you'd like to listen to my videos in podcast form, the link for that is also in the description, as well as links to my social media accounts and my PO box address. See you next time and happy philatling.